All right, I wanna make a really quick video on how to do this because I could not find any information on it and I kinda of had to learn as I went and I think I figured out a way to do it. There are more than a few videos on how to depower a Integra rack, which is the rack most people go with, but I have an EG rack here. It's what I have, I'm gonna use it. It's not in its final assembly, but it's just a dry mock-up. I know that it's gonna work from this point so I'm going to tear it down and show you guys exactly what I did. All right, so I've assembled it to look like it would as if you just pulled it out of the rat, um, the car. Sorry. What you need to do first is remove the pinion. To do that, you need to remove this junk here and some junk down here. It's worth noting that you're not going to need any of the internals from this stuff. It's all in here. This just slides off. And you'll have one C-clip here. You need to remove that. And then go ahead, turn the rack over to this cover here. Remove the cover. One more C-clip in there. Flip it back. And the pinion will just pull straight out. So this seems to be the biggest the biggest difference between the EG and the Integra rack is the pinion is actually one piece on the EG rack. <clears throat> on the Integra rack, it's two pieces, and it has some kind of clutch system or torsion system that allows for a little bit of play in the pinion, so the steering is a little bit smoother, but you're not going to want that once you delete the power steering. On this EG rack, obviously the pinion is one piece, so there's no need to weld it, but... That bit of slop that the Integra, rack ha uh, the Integra rack has is here. You can kind of see that. This mechanism in here rotates. It's not a perfect circle. So that's where you're going to get your play if you don't find a way to resolve that. I'm going to go ahead and finish tearing down the rack, and then I'll show you guys what I did to resolve that issue. Next, you're going to want to remove this adjuster. This adjust the tension between the rack and pinion, eliminates any slop or play. You take it off, you'll notice there's a spring in there. Next you're going to want to separate the housing, undo these four bolts. It is spring loaded, not by much, just be wary and keep a hold of all the parts. I will try to film it. Alright, now that the rack is separated, you'll be able to remove the rack itself. There is some internals inside here. It is not necessary to remove and everything with them, but if you'd like to remove them, clean them, and put them back, you can. Now, the next important step to converting your power steering rack to manual steering is removing this pressure ring here. It'll be here on the rack. You could just use a grinder, cut a slit, and then hammer it off with a chisel. That will stop the rack from creating pressure on either side while turning. So now that the rack is disassembled and the rack itself has the ring removed, there's only one more issue that we need to resolve, and that is the original issue I showed you guys with this play here. So this is really hard to capture on camera, but I want to show you guys exactly what's going on. You can kind of see in there, you see how there's those two stops? This rotates and it hits both stops. That's, that's kind of how the mechanism works. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this and show you guys how I resolve this issue. Just slide it out. That's what the piece looks like. We're not going to modify this piece at all, but we are going to modify the housing. So I've already gone ahead and drilled those two holes, but those two holes will not be there. What will be there is these kind of two metal stoppers that this piece actually hits against. There is some witness marks on there that you can see. So what I did was drilled out those stops, threaded the holes with a eight by 125 pitch tap. And after you install some bolts, Try to make sure that they are equal lengths, that way this is not off-centered. I'm going to try to get this pin as centered as possible. 
and as you can see the play is gone there's no play i'm gonna just put a bunch of loctite on these bolts another thing you could do is use studs that might be a better not better option but i'm gonna try these bolts if they back out i'll probably go to a stud instead then just go ahead grease everything up real nice and reassemble another thing to note is this slack adjuster it is going to need to be adjusted when you reassemble i haven't done enough research to confidently tell you guys how to do it per se so just do a little bit of research on how to adjust this the people that convert the integra racks they have the same bolt those guys have some some info on that so although it is said that the eg power steering rack has a slower steering ratio than the integra i am not fully con convinced there are there are some conflicting opinions on that so i of course urge you to do your own research on that as well and make the decision based on your needs the really cool thing about doing this eg conversion is that nothing needs to be welded you do need to do some you need to tap this uh, that that is a little bit difficult but at least you don't have to take your pinion to a shop to get welded or attempt to weld it yourself and warp it so this is in some ways a better option for somebody on a budget or a driveway mechanic like myself. As always, I urge everybody to do their own research on everything and make their own decisions based on that. This is what I did. I hope that it helps somebody. I'm sure there will be at least maybe one person that searches this up the way that I did when I found no results. So hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.